Hello, and welcome back to the Elegant Balance podcast. I am so excited that you are here. Before we dig in today's content, I have a request for you. If you haven't already, could you head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a five-star rating and review? That helps this show grow. That helps me meet me reach more and more women with the message of the fact that a work-life balance is possible, right? Um, so that I can teach more women how to create a work-life balance that they love. So if you haven't already left a rating and review, I would be so grateful to you if you just hit pause right now and head on over there, leave a rating and review, and then come back and I will be here when you get back. <laughs> okay, so today I want to talk about simple ways that you can look more professional and polished at work. I came up with this topic because I was brainstorming different podcast topics that I could share with you all. And I started asking myself, what were some things that I really struggled with or felt like I had to spend a lot of time figuring out when I was first starting in my career? And one of those things was, how do I you know, show up and, and be a professional woman? And not only professional, but how do I show up as a polished woman? How do I, you know, style myself so that I come across as an elegant woman? Um, and so I have spent a lot of time talking to my mentors and my mom. Um, I dug into a lot of hours probably of YouTube videos and podcasts and even just, you know, trying on a lot of different things in my closet and trying to figure out what worked and what didn't work. And so I thought that I would share the things that I've learned with you here today. A few things to note is that I am not a stylist by any means. Um, I enjoy style, but I also enjoy things to be super simple and timeless and classic. And so I'm not necessarily like all about the trends and stuff. You can probably find a better resource for that. Um, also, I'm sharing things that I have learned from other people, right? Some of my favorite resources for classic, timeless, elegant style are Tanya Lee. She has the School of Self-Image podcast. And then also Audrey Coyne, who has an amazing YouTube channel dedicated to classic timeless style. So they would be really great resources to go um, to go check out. But like I said, not a style expert, but I am a firm believer in the power of style because the way that you dress is going to have an impact on the way that you show up in the world. The way that you tackle the different roles that you play, whether that be an employee, a leader in your workplace, or even just as a mom or a wife or a friend, what we wear has an impact, has power over how we behave, how we show up. Um, there's actually research that supports that notion. And I've done a previous podcast episode on that idea, which I'll link in the show notes. And whether we like it or not, um, there is evidence also that the way we show up in the workplace is going to have an impact on how others perceive us, right? And how they treat us at work. And so assuming that you want to show up as the best possible version of yourself, the most professional and polished version of yourself, you have to start taking your, your style into consideration. So even though I believe it's important, I'm also a really big fan of elegance. Like I said, I'm not up to date with the trends necessarily. I just really love classic timeless style, anything that's elegant, right? And the definition of elephant, elegant is the elephant. <laughs> elegant is things being sim simple and effective, okay? So today I wanted to share a few simple tips with you, um, but also very effective tips on how to show up more professionally and polished at work. So the first thing is to just start with the basics. Um, having a polished, put together look really just starts with basic personal hygiene, okay? Super simple things like making sure that you're showering and you're brushing your teeth and you're wearing deodorant. Um, this is good news because you're probably already doing these things. And so you can just cross that off your list. <laughs> the next step is to make sure that you're taking care of your hair, skin, and nails. So when I envision a polished woman, I envision people like Grace Kelly or Audrey Hepburn, or a more recent example would be Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales. These women always look so put together and polished. 
And there's a few things that they have in common, and three of them being well-maintained hair, skin, and nails. So let's start with hair. If you want to appear more polished at work, or really just anywhere that you go, anywhere you show up, you're going to want to make sure that you're maintaining healthy, clean, and neat hair. So in terms of keeping my hair healthy, there are some different things I do to maintain my hair's health and things that I've learned, you know, throughout the, throughout my life, right? Trying to figure out how can I grow my hair, make sure it's as healthy as possible so it continues to stay long and pretty. Um, one of those is just simply going to the hairdresser on a regular basis and making sure that I am getting it trimmed up whenever it starts to show any signs of breakage or um, it's starting to get a little brittle or split ends, things like that. So regular trim, um, also taking vitamins that have not only just a multivitamin that's good for my whole body, um, but also vitamins that have biotin or collagen in them. Both, I take both biotin and collagen, um, which those vitamins are also really great for your skin and nails. So it's a win, win, win. In terms of keeping my hair clean, I use Arbonne's sulfate-free shampoo and their conditioner and a leave-in treatment. You, it doesn't really matter what type of shampoo you use. There's a lot of good shampoo out there. The main thing I have found for me is that you don't want to use anything that's too harsh, anything that's going to strip the natural oils out of your, out of your hair, because you want those oils to get down to the ends and keep it hydrated. So yeah, so you don't want anything too harsh. You don't want to strip the oils. And then keeping it clean, when I say that, I don't mean washing your hair every single day. In fact, I only wash my hair one or two times a week, but you want it to have the appearance of being clean, right? If you think of a polished woman, she's probably not showing up with really greasy, oily hair and it's real stringy or ratty and, and dirty looking. Um, instead, you want it to be clean and look well-maintained, which relates to the idea of it being neat, right? And so you can wash it, but you can also do other quick and easy things to make sure it appears that your hair is clean. Um, one of those, one of my favorite tools is dry shampoo. So those are for, re it's really good for like day three or four hair. Honestly, dry shampoo is great for volume and texture as well. So sometimes I will use it on the same day I wash my hair just to get a little more volume at my roots. So dry shampoo, which you can get anywhere. And then also having an arsenal or a library of different hairstyles that you, you kind of have your go-to hairstyles that you use whenever you're on day three or four, right? If it's been a few days since you washed your hair, maybe you have some certain hairstyles that you use that kind of hide the fact that you haven't washed it for a while. Things like really sleek ponytails can be good. If you have, you know, you haven't washed your hair for a while and you're using dry shampoo, nice, pretty buns, you know, like a chignon in the back or also braids. Braids can be really great. Um, and honestly, my hair looks better braided on day three or four than it does on the first day because it's not as silky and has a little bit more texture to it. Headbands can also be your best friend when it comes to day three or day four hair. And then the last point with regards to hair, then we'll move on, is that you want to make sure you're keeping it nice and neat, right? A polished, if you think about a polished appearance, um, her hair is probably not like super crazy. And I don't mean, especially for those of you who have curly hair and it's unpredictable, I get that. My hair is wavy and my hair is never silky straight, right? That's not what I mean by, by, um, by neat hair, not silky straight. Just hair that it's obvious that you, tr that you made an attempt, right? It's not in a messy bun just on top of your hair, on top of your head, like you didn't put any effort into it. You're not just rolling out of bed with bed head. Um, it's obvious to people that you have styled it appropriately depending on what type of hair you have, okay? Next up is skin. So another simple way to be more polished is to take exquisite care of your skin. And this has become more and more important to me as I've gotten older. I feel like my mom told me I needed to wash my face every night, probably back as a preteen, right? She encouraged me to wash my face, wash my makeup, all of those things. But I don't feel like I really listened and did that until late in my late 20s or even in my 30s. And so I'm starting, as I'm getting older, I'm starting to realize like, oh yeah, I really need to make sure I'm taking good care of my skin. When you have good, clear, clean, moisturized skin, it gives you a better canvas for your makeup, right? And honestly, you just show up better, more confident when your skin's well-maintained. And so skincare routines, there's a million of them out there. They can be anything from super simple two-step routines to like 
super complicated 20 step routines. I've had both. During COVID, when we were locked down, I tried some more elaborate skincare routines and I was able to stick to it for a while. But once we kind of went back to normal life, my routine now is pretty basic. It's basically just cleansing my face, making sure I'm cleaning it and then moisturizing it. Okay. But like I said, there's a wide variety of products, a wide variety of steps that you could use to take care of your skin. The importance is that you're actually intentionally caring for your, for your skin. Some of the products that I like to use for skincare, right now I use Arbonne's Derm Results. Um, they're, they're cleanser and then they're, they're cream. But in the past, I've also used Neutrogena, which I really like. I have drier skin and Neutrogena just seemed to work really well for me. So that'd be something you could easily get at CVS or Target. Okay. A few things with regards to skin, not just skincare, but also makeup. Makeup's going to be important in terms of how polished you appear at work. And it's not that you have to, you have to wear makeup. I just personally enjoy makeup and like to wear it. Um, but I think where you don't want to go is overboard with your makeup, right? If you're going for a very polished look, you want to make sure that you are not using foundation that's a really really off color from your skin color. Like we don't want really sharp lines, right? That don't match our neck. You also don't want to maybe do anything too crazy in terms of bold colors of eyeshadows or glitters or all of those things. Um, you think timeless, classic, um, keeping things simple, right? Okay. And then finally, um, we talked about hair, talked about skin and the last one was nails, right? So I have always considered well manicured nails to just be the icing on the cake. Um, for me, growing up, when a woman had her nails done and I noticed it, I always felt like that just signaled that she was just really well put together and she spent time on herself and she cared enough about herself to, to spend that time on herself. And well manicured nails does not mean that you have to go out to a salon and spend gobs of money on manicures, right? I have done both. I've DIY'd it, which is what I currently do with the Kiss and Press nails. Um, but you can also go to the salon and get them done. Either one is fine. It's just the intentional, just maintaining, right? You're making sure that your nails look nice. Some things to keep in mind when it comes to your nails are first to just avoid those super, super long nails and also anything that's like neon colored or overly glittery or glitzy. Um, we're looking for more polished classic look, right? And so for me, that means sticking to pretty neutral colors. Um, things like beige or light pinks or maybe sometimes red, depending, but nothing neon, nothing with like diamonds on them or anything like that. Very, very classic. Um, the second thing to keep in mind is if your nails do are polished and if the polish gets chipped, it's going to look a lot more classy if you fix it, right? If it's chipped, go ahead and repaint it so that it's not looking, um, so that it looks more, more polished. If it's broken, then go get it fixed or fix it yourself if you did it at home. Okay, so we've covered the basics, right? We've covered some beauty basics, showering, basic hygiene, hair, skin, and nails. So now let's talk about clothing, okay? What do polished professional women wear at work? So when it comes to clothes, the simplest way to appear more polished at work is to really focus on quality. And when I say quality, I'm not referring simply to just buying expensive pieces of clothing, okay? That's not what I mean. There's a few different aspects of quality that I wanted to talk to you about. So the first one is that you want to make sure your clothes are of good quality in the sense that they fit you well, right? Your clothes should fit you like a glove, okay? And when you have a wardrobe filled with clothes that do fit you really well, you're going to find it a lot easier to put together outfits for the for the day. And you're also gonna be more confident in how you show up. You're gonna feel good because your clothes fit you well and they accentuate the assets that you want to accentuate, right? And so that's the first consideration of quality. Don't let yourself get caught up in looking at the number on the tag. Um, I know for me, my weight has ranged I don't know, after four pregnancies and like working out and losing weight and then eating whatever I want and gaining some weight, I have gone through so many iterations of what number is on that tag that I just, you can't pay attention to that. You can't let that get to you. It's just there as a guideline. Um, but if it doesn't fit, 
don't keep it or don't try to squeeze yourself into it because you will look so much better if you just buy the next size up, right? You'll feel better too because it's more comfortable and it fits well. Um, so don't put too much emphasis on that number. Also, you want to make sure that you're buying things that fit well. And if they don't fit well, or maybe you're in between sizes, you can always consider taking it to a tailor, right? Buy it a little bit big, for instance, like a suit jacket, buy a little bit big and then take it to a tailor and have them make it fit you like a glove, okay? The second consideration of quality is maybe what you initially think of when you think of quality of clothing is how well is the clothing made? So some indicators of quality clothing are things like the stitching. Um, so you want strong, consistent stitching on the garment. You shouldn't be able to pick at it and, and it kind of come apart. Um, you shouldn't see any big gaps on the stitches like that. So pay attention to the stitching. The buttons should be well fastened on. Um, if they're not well fastened and they feel like they could just pop off any minute, that's an indicator that maybe that garment was not made with a lot of intentionality. Maybe it wasn't well made, right? It's not going to hold up very well. And then another thing you can look at is the zipper, right? Zippers are important. If a zipper breaks, I'm not a seamstress, so I can't fix it, right? If my zipper breaks, that, that dress or those pants, I could just no longer use them until I get it fixed. And so the Y, if you look at the zipper, sometimes you will see a YKK. Um, on the zipper. Those are really high quality zippers. So that's something you could also look for. Another indicator of quality is the type of fabric that your clothing is made from. Fabrics like silk and cashmere and wool and cotton and even leather um, or linen, your natural fibers, those are going to appear more luxurious um, and they're also just going to feel better uh, when you're wearing them. So Again, a good rule of thumb when you're shopping is to look for pieces of clothing that are made from those natural fibers, things like silk, cotton, wool, cashmere, linen, all of those. And they also breathe really well. So for those of you who maybe get hot um, in sweaters and stuff, I myself am that way, but I can wear cashmere sweaters, no problem. So something to keep in, keep in mind. My favorite place to shop for quality clothing is not at the department store, okay? So high quality clothing does not mean that you have to go out and shop a designer clothes, shop for designer clothes, um, go to the department stores, drop hundreds of dollars. That's not what that means. And um, there's well-made clothes that you can get pretty affordably. In fact, my favorite place to shop for quality clothing is the local consignment shop. Again, you can you can find these high quality pieces when you know what you're looking for. If you're looking at things like the stitching and the buttons and the zippers and the fabric that it's made from. And you know, you can always recognize some brands that are better than others are known to make higher quality clothing than others. You can look for those at the consignment shop. You don't have to spend a ton of money on a quality wardrobe. I actually did a podcast episode all about how to approach um, a trip to the thrift store. And I will link to that in the show notes for you. Okay. And finally, you are going to appear more polished if you maintain the quality of your clothes by simply just ensuring that they are properly, properly cleaned and cared for. Okay, there's nothing classy or polished about a wrinkled shirt or a stained sweater. So make sure you're taking good care of your clothes. Okay, tip four is to dress for the occasion. It's imperative that you understand the dress code for your specific workplace, okay? Every work environment is going to be different. And so you wanna take some time to understand what is the dress code? What do we wear here? What's acceptable here? Um, if there's a formal dress code, then I encourage you to go and read it. Go see what it says about what the expectations are in terms of how you dress in your workplace. Also, just be a student. Um, an, an observer of what people around you are wearing. And maybe if you have aspirations to move up in your company, don't just look at what your coworkers are wearing, but look and see what your boss is wearing. What is her boss wearing? What's the CEO wearing? Um, and start dressing, start dressing for the job that you want, not necessarily the job that you have. In my opinion, you can never be overdressed, but you can definitely be underdressed, okay? And it might surprise you, like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, how the way that you are dressed is going to impact how people 
interact with you, how they perceive you or how they how they treat you. So just keep that in mind when you are trying to decide what you're going to wear. There are typically two different levels of dress in the workplace. You've got your business professional and you've got business casual. So business professional is the more formal of the two. And it involves just wearing your very classic business attire. So you think like your suit jacket with your silk blouse and your pencil skirt and your heels, okay? Very formal. Business casual, on the other hand, is just less formal, but it still involves dressing nicely, okay? So wearing things like maybe a slacks and a, a nice blouse and a, um, a cardigan and flats would be more of a business casual outfit. It's important to note that just because you hear the word casual in business casual, that does not mean that you can wear jeans and t-shirts and tennis shoes. That's not what business casual is, okay? So don't fall into that trap. Okay, number five is to pay attention to the details. When aiming for a polished, put together look, accessories like your handbag and your watches, your jewelry, your belt, your shoes, those can make or break an outfit, okay? Personally, like I said, I prefer really classic, timeless styles. And so I try to keep things simple, right? In my opinion, less is more. You may not feel that way, but um, that is what I think of when I think of a very polished look is keeping things simple. Um, for me, I like to choose either like silver or gold. I, I always choose gold. Gold is my favorite. Um, but you could choose silver or gold and kind of run with that. So for me, I like gold better. So I will wear gold studs. For earrings, I my belts are typically brown or black with like a gold belt buckle. Um, my purse has gold details on my handbag, right? Um, I have a gold watch and I think it looks more cohesive. It makes your outfit look more, more cohesive if everything kind of coordinates, okay? So pick one, gold or silver, and, and kind of coordinate from there. Some of the other details that I have found to be helpful is one, wearing a belt with pants that have um, belt loops can really just pull things together and really take an outfit from just kind of looking okay to looking like very polished and professional. Um, so that's something that I have found helpful. Also, polishing your shoes. Okay, so if you have a, a pair of flats that you always wear for work or you have a pair of black heels, maybe if they start to get a little scuffed, that does not mean you have to throw them away. Instead, just get some black shoe polish and polish them up. They will look brand new. It's amazing how, how much it can elevate your look when your shoes are clean and, and shiny and all polished. And honestly, by doing that, your shoes are going to last a lot longer. Coco Chanel once said, one of my favorite quotes, before you leave the house, look in the mirror and take at least one thing off. Okay, so again, like I said, I like very classic, simple outfits. I think those are the ones that look most most polished. And so don't go overboard on the accessories, right? Um, feel free to express yourself by all means, but I would also encourage you to consider the whole idea of less being more. And finally, the final ingredient to looking more polished and professional at work, and maybe the most important one, is just confidence, okay? When you feel confident and love the way that you look, then you're going to carry yourself in a way that exudes professionalism and a way that really is exuding professionalism and poise, right? If you're not feeling too confident, well, hopefully tackling some of these other tips will help you feel more confident in showing up in a professional way, in a polished way. Um, but there's other things you can do, such as practicing your posture, making sure you're standing up straight or sitting up straight. Um, I know I struggle with this one. I'm always hunched over my desk like this, right? Um, so I have to mind, be mindful of my posture. But when we stand up straight, it shows more confidence, right? And we can also practice confidence by smiling more often. Um, you appear more confident when you're smiling. And then finally, it's just talking to yourself in a positive way, encouraging yourself, being kind to yourself. Um, that's going to help you feel more confident as well. So after you get your polished outfit all put together, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and tell yourself how amazing you look, okay? I hope that today's episode has been helpful for you, that you can take some of these different tips and just run with them and create a really beautiful, polished look um, for your workplace. 
if you have any questions, feel free to um, reach out. You can reach out to me on Instagram. It's at Kaylee J. Hackney, or you can send me an email. It's Kaylee at KayleeHackney.com. And I would really love to hear from you. Thank you so much and have a beautiful, joy-filled week.